This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have officially made it the start of the 2022 NFL season is coming up tonight. We got Rams versus Bills. We are here to break down the entirety of week number one from an NFL betting perspective. I am joined today by Ryan Williams. We're going to have a blast breaking down week number one and getting you some good bets for this week over on FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here as it will be most Thursdays by Ryan Williams. You can check out Ryan on Twitter at RyanAlexander underscore W. Ryan, we got NFL coming up tonight. We got NFL this weekend. It is a great time to be talking to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jim. I, I appreciate you having me on, on covering the spread. You've been you've been putting out massive work here. You took the vacation a little bit over the summer. It took a little hiatus from Twitter. People were, you know, e- emailing and, and reaching out on Twitter and DMs and FanDuel. Where has Jim Sonis been all <laughs> summer long? And then you come back and you start firing off these podcasts left and right. You got the cover and the spread. You got the heat check. You got everything that you're doing with MLB. Uh, so I'm just happy you were able to fit me into your schedule. Well, see, Ryan, you're talking about ske- the travel as if it's in the past, but I'll be seeing you this weekend in Chicago for a FanDuel right. Fan Fest that's coming up at Guaranteed Rate Field out in Chicago. So I get to meet you in real life. We're going to talk some betting at 630 uh, at the White Sox Stadium. Are you a Cubs or a White Sox fan? I guess I never asked this. Yeah, I don't think we ever talked about it. I'm a Cubs guy. Um, okay. I'm actually named after Ryan Sandberg, if you can. Love it you know, believe that my mom was a, a, a transplant from the West coast and kind of just came in on the eighties Cubs. She liked that player. Uh, but shout out, shout out to my grandmother who decided that nobody would be able to spell my name, right. If right. it was Ryan. So went with the traditional spelling of Ryan and right. that's how that comes. But, uh, but yeah, I've probably been to uh, Comiskey, the cell guaranteed rate field, whatever you want to call it uh, yeah. more times than in Wrigley. Cause I grew up on the South side. Okay. I, I tried to get my convince my wife to name our dog uh, Byron. Uh, so luckily your parents were more successful in the baseball negotiation naming rights. Yeah. So uh, and I, I think I appreciate your grandma as well. R Y N E pretty tough. So uh, yeah. good looks on the Ryan there. And Ryan, if you have not heard his voice before, if you're a new listener to covering the spread, we've had him on a couple of times. I did a show with Ryan talk player props every week uh, before Monday Night Football. We did that every year. We're going to talk some player props for Monday Night Football on Monday on the same stream as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But also, we've had you on for our Super Bowl preview, other stuff as well. But Ryan, I think that it's it's fun to have you on here. More regularly, people like kind of get to know you a little bit. But people who don't know your background here and, and your, I guess, like, your betting flair, you know, what is your overall betting process? Uh, I, I'm a numbers-based person, uh, but that's also... It has its flaws. It's not for everyone. What's the process look like for you from a betting perspective? Yeah, well, we've talked extensively kind of about my process as it relates to DFS, right, Jim, and and playing daily fantasy and what that's become and what that means. And I kind of carry over that same mindset to the the betting field. I mean, there's obviously sharper people who have been doing it a lot longer than than I have, but you really for me it's it's looking at the trends and looking at the data that you know, puts on paper the same way that you would be assessing a DFS lineup for me. Now, there's some people that do betting that don't even do DFS, but I'm just saying that the same knowledge, I think, translates. And what I really like to do is attack the the player props market. You know me, I'm always talking about, you know, how can we, everybody's looking at the the totals, the spreads, um, the money line. And, and while that's well and good, and that's where a lot of the content is focused, but Vegas is Vegas is Vegas for a reason. I mean, they they can set these numbers and they are like some of the most accurate things. We don't see like what happened last year when it was Armageddon week for Vegas because they lost so much money. I, I I had it written down somewhere, but I I just remember that weekend where they, you know, those are the favorites and and people were just like, people yep. tend to bet favorites so it was it was Absolutely. a rough week there i remember that yeah yeah r- rough week so it's like when you're looking at these player part markets and even the anytime touchdowns i mean we'll, we'll talk about you know specific games later but when you're looking at some guys and you know maybe a player's 
not actually ruled out at the start of when the player props are released. You can get good numbers on their receiving props, rushing props, passing props, anytime touchdown, things of that nature. And, and when you're when you're laying those bets, whether it be, you know, if you have units set or if you have a monetary dollar set, you're you're able to make up for, you know, if you're hitting 50 percent of spreads, totals or, or less than. Uh, that that's not really going to equate in your in your ROI is not going to look that enticing. But when you're hitting these player props at two to one, three to one, five to one, and you're hitting that at a 50 percent clip. Now, all of a sudden, you're looking at that ROI start to increase just on a little bit of a success rate. So, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I land on in the betting betting world yeah. of things. You're just looking for value. And that value could be finding something where the implied odds are 33%, but the odds of it actually happening are 37%. You know, you're looking for those edges. And those edges will not always, will usually not be super large, but I think that you're right in pinpointing that you're more likely to find a larger edge in the less bet into markets, which are the player props. So we're going to be talking about some spreads, some money lines, some totals throughout the podcast for today. But like I said, we're talking with you about um the player props for monday night football coming up this monday and also a full player prop betting preview with jj zacharyson will be on this feed later on today on thursday talking about jj's favorite player props and jj will be with us throughout the season as well to talk some player props but of course we'll talk about them here too with you because why would we not do that we're going to dive in to week number one in just one second but first with college football and the nfl now both here it's time to get in on the action early this season to help get you started FanDuel sportsbook new FanDuel sportsbook customers can get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars whether it's spreads money lines or props Odds for that and more are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, we will talk a bit about the Thursday night game at the end of the show. We'll put that at the end in case you're listening here on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You don't want to skip past that. We'll talk about some brief thoughts on Bills versus Rams later on. But let's start things off here with an NFC North divisional battle. Of, unfortunately, not your Bears, Ryan, but it is the <laughs> Packers at the Vikings. Right now, the Packers are two-and-a-half-point favorites. The uh, total here is 47-and-a-half. And this Green Bay offense... Looks a whole lot different than it did last year. They've got no Devontae Adams. Uh, David Bakhtiari is back, which is good, but uh, some coaching personnel changes as well. So I want to ask you, Ryan, can the Packers get the job done in what is, I think at least, a pretty tough assignment on the road? Yeah, it, you're going to really be looking at who's suiting up for Green Bay. I mean, we pretty much have known that this is going to be wide receiver roulette, um, even though Patrick Mahomes, I guess, was the first one to say it for the Chiefs, that like you're never going to know who the wide receiver for Kansas City is going to be. I, th I think that's the same thing here. Um, Rodgers has been very vocal about the younger guys um, not being able to you know, catch the ball as he's, as he's used to seeing. And we know that Aaron Rodgers in the past has not had a good relationship with with rookies or young receivers, but that's pretty much all that he has. So Christian Watson looks like, you know, he's trending on the right direction here. Um, what's the deal with Alan Lazard, who all of a sudden, you know, at the end of preseason was popping up on the injury report and probably is one of his most trusted confidants in the wide receiver group. And then you're looking at a guy like Robert Tunyon, uh, who's looking healthy and can play. So I think there probably is enough there considering the run game too. And I'm really excited to see the Viking side of the ball as well um and and i i i like the total uh jim especially with it moving moving back of a full point it opened at 48 and a half i got it at 48 and a half and i'm happy to get it at 47 and a half or 47 especially if they start ruling guys out i think that we'll start to see it come down this is a divisional matchup like you said most people are tending to think that 
especially in week one, divisional opponents come out there. The Packers defense is expected to be a little bit better as well, too. So that will start to trend things, I think, down on this game, especially the, the more uncertainty that we get. And I'm willing to embrace that because we have two. We know that Aaron Rodgers is going to throw the ball at a heavy clip. We know on the other side of the ball that the Minnesota Vikings have tried to move pace. And that was back with, when Mike Zimmer was there, that these teams were, you know, they were still trying to be, as as efficient through the air as they could possibly be with Kirk Cousins. And now you bring in Kevin O'Connell. And I just think it's going to be all out on the field. This is at home in, in U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota against a rival opponent like Green Bay. They are not trying to go down and lay down and just be like, oh, we'll get out with a win. Like, I think they want to stick it to them. I think they want to see that they're the top of the division. And so on the other side, we love when Aaron Rodgers can be in a position to push the to push the bell. So on the side of things, you know, the number increasing up by a full point as well, two and a half to the Packers from one and a half, that kind of makes me weary, but I'm going to attack it from the total standpoint. It actually is one and a half. I, I I think it moved after I recorded it. So I like had this graphic up. It was one and a half. I changed it to two and a half and now it's back to one and a half again. So let's just change the graphic mid show. You know, why not? Um, It is back to one and a half now. And I think that's appropriate because My numbers have this as a 0.89 point game in favor of the Packers. So not enough where I'm looking to bet it. It's a situation where there's not a big enough edge there. I can't go towards the Vikings money line. Is there a minus 102? And I do the the Packers favored. I think to me, this winds up being a stay away in terms of the side, in terms of the, in terms of the money line as well, because it is a pretty evenly matched game. My numbers view it the exact same way. I don't talk about the total because My numbers view this as being a very efficient game. It's the fourth most efficient aggregate offensive efficiency game on the slate for week number one. And most of the games above it have very high totals. we got Rams, Bills, uh, we have Chargers, Raiders, and then Chiefs, Cardinals. The reason this one is down is because the Packers run at this like sluggish, sluggish pace. But I kind of get what you're saying as well, where they're they're still going to be efficient. And that does matter at the end of the day as well. The Vikings should be faster than they were last year uh, based on their pass rate and stuff like that. So I am annoyed by the Packers pace and it does bother me, but I do still think that I'm on board with you where 47 and a half. I think that's probably the way to go with this game. If you were to bet one of the more traditional markets is leaning that way. Like, yes, the pace annoys me, but there are two very efficient offenses. My numbers account for the fact that Green, I think I have Green Bay projected to be one of the best defenses in the entire league this year. Let me just yeah. pull that up quick. Like it's accounting mm-hmm. for that and still views this as being an efficient, efficient game overall. So I, I think that for me, if I were to bet uh, a anything within the traditional markets here, I would go with the total of 47 and a half. I agree with you there. Yeah, it, it it's just one of those things. And, you, and you, you're looking at where public money is coming on on this gym and everybody is hammering the under on this. And you can see that clearly because the total is being bet down. I know that it's 47 across some places, 47 and a half uh, with the hook there is what is what we have. And I think that it, it'll continue to do so. And that's when I just, you know, I just tend to just keep jumping on it um, when when stuff like that happens. And I have such a such a, a surety that, you know, it'll go the different direction. And, you know, we always talk about fade, fading the public. So uh, I just, you know, kind of see where the money comes in and where where my beliefs align and, and try and take advantage of that. Yeah, 47 and a half right now, minus 115 on the under, which probably implies that FanDuel, there's decent odds they get down to 47 as well. So maybe yeah. a wait and see situation, see if it gets down to 47. I would wait till, I think Alan Lazard's probably not going to play based on missing practice on Wednesday. Once he's ruled right. out and make it down to 47, maybe you're getting 46 and a half. That's the situation where once we see that movement, I might buy in at that point. Yeah. Okay. Let's go out here to an AFC West battle. We got the Raiders at the Chargers. Chargers, three and a half point favorites here right now. Total 52 and a half. And the Chargers work this offseason has been on improving their defense. Uh, They got Khalil Mack uh, for a second round pick. They got JC Jackson in there in free agency. But Jackson likely to be out this week. So, Ryan, can the Chargers live up to the hype and cover here against what is a pretty feisty divisional opponent? Yeah, I'm I'm not as interested uh in in uh the the spread on on this one on either side. The only reason being is because they're again, we're talking about where the public is and where the money's coming in. 77% of the money is on the spread for Las Vegas in in this game and and 86% is coming in 
on the Las Vegas money line. So you can see, and, and that's exactly where I would align, which is the only reason that makes me nervous, Jim. But you're looking at a Josh, Josh McDaniels team. I mean, he starts off the preseason in the Hall of Fame game, right? And he's like playing Josh Jacobs and making people go crazy and like talking about how, you know, explosive they're going to be. And the, and the writing's on the wall there. They bring in a guy like Devontae Adams. They're working to get Darren Waller re-signed. They're doing some things on the defensive side, but not great. And even if you're talking about J.C. Jackson being out for this game, too like this is another one the total is going to be you know that number is, is crazy people are are gonna really try and shy away from this on week one when you're talking about 53 and a hook I believe is where I last saw it at but these are two prolific offenses we just saw them play each other really not that long ago Jim when you think about it the week right. 18 matchup it's do or die the, t- the team that wins gets in and just all the crazy drama that went along with that maybe that maybe that sparks something to keep this total a little bit down but just the way that these two teams play you're looking at the Chargers from a year ago top three in in passing rate then you're looking at the Raiders a year ago before McDaniels was even there with all that was going on they were a top 10 team the top seven I believe in passing rate so that just all of that just speaks to me is that this game is going to be a bonanza and that's really exciting so i love getting action on this game it's just a matter of i i want to try and do it where i'm not gonna be disappointed with you know 90 percent of other people on it yeah so what's what is your favorite route for getting exposure to this game because i do think the the total is enticing uh, over 52 and a half is minus one of six there's no JC Jackson. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I think that that's a factor for sure. The Raiders' offense efficiency tanked after the Henry Ruggs incident last year, but now they add Devontae Adams. So you're getting potentially a more efficient, more efficient Raiders offense. You're getting a Chargers defense that still has flaws with Jackson being out. Uh, this I expect the Chargers offense to go nuclear the entire year. So I think that the yeah. total. If I were looking at this game, might be enticing for me. What's your route for getting exposure to this game if it's not going to be via the side? Yeah, I, I I think that I would definitely look at the look at the total as well. I mean, this is going to be an, a a game that's kind of heavily talked about. So if you're not really looking at the side, but I I do kind of we're looking at the Chargers as being one of the lone home favorites on this week to open up. Uh, week one of the season we got a lot of home dogs uh that are that are just littering the slate and so you know with the Chargers being the lone one and not really getting that much attention I like going to the Chargers side here there's just a lot more um there's a lot more that I can that I can put my hat on for the mm-hmm. Chargers side. There's a lot of question marks that we that we need to see with the Raiders first. And just because they're getting kind of so hyped up and I kind of I was, you know, talking with some people before the season about, you know, should we be putting money money on Derek Carr at MVP at where his odds were, you know, just just because this is this is it for him like this is we've given you all the pieces all the lay of the land like if this doesn't work out for the Raiders I don't really think that it starts with Josh McDaniels it starts with Derek Carr so because all those question marks I would still try and look at the look at the side here um with the Chargers get three and a half with the hook yeah I do show a bit of value there either the Chargers by 4.76 points so about a point uh 1.25 points of value there for me it's not enough where I want to bet it. I typically want a bit more. I think their cover odds are a bit around 52%, which is basically where they're implied to be. So I can't quite get there. But if I were to, if you forced me to pick a side, I would go to the Chargers. My numbers love them this year, uh, as with every single year, because why would they not? Uh, but right. not quite enough for me to bet that one there. So let's uh, go to the Sunday night game. we got the Buccaneers, two and a half point favorites on the road against the Dallas Cowboys at Jerry World. Totally here is 50 and a half. And both these teams missing key pieces entering week one. Uh, and a lot of it is on the offensive side because we got the injuries along the offensive line for the Buccaneers. I'm assuming no Chris Godwin because he's not clear for contact just yet for the Buccaneers, but uh, still to be determined on that one. And of course, the Tyron Smith injury with the Cowboys, no Michael Gallup. So a lot of offensive injuries here. What are you seeing in this game, Ryan? It's it's Tyron Smith for me is what it comes down to. I mean, that seems so rudimentary and, and basic Jim, but it's like this Dallas, this Dallas team is it's Drekel and Hyde when, when this guy is on the field and when he's not. And even then you could take it a step further and factor in Lyle Collins, who's not there anymore sure. on the offensive line who goes away and the efficiency numbers uh, for Dak and, and the rest of this offense have dropped by um, even, even like a full, you know, y- yard per play 
um, yeah. when these guys are not on the field. And, and Tyron Smith is really the key there. So when we're looking at two and a half here, you know, getting under that key number of three with the Bucks and just all the drama that's gone around with Tom Brady and Bruce Arians, you know, not, not being there and him coming back and what's going on with the wide receiver core. We don't know. Chris Godwin could actually end up playing in this game. As crazy as that seems, people thought he was going to start on the, the PUP list. Um, it's just, it's just one of those things. I get it. It's at home and people will probably be looking at last year, these two teams faced, it was an explosive game and then Dallas was able to cover by two here. Um, and that was in Tampa Bay. Now this is in Dallas, but I just, I just feel like with Dallas, like I, I really just think the writing's on the wall for this team to really struggle this year. They have a tough schedule. Doesn't give them any, you know, favors to start off the season like this with Tampa Bay. Um, I, I really like getting the Tampa Bay side of things on this, just given all the, all the stuff that we know about what Dallas is dealing with on the injury front. Yeah, I was honestly kind of surprised when I pulled up this number when I was first looking at week one spreads. It was a while ago, obviously, but like I was a bit surprised because I was expecting, given the negative sentiment around Dallas, this number to be a bit larger. So two and a right. half, I think that, you know, it was it was kind of a shock to me. And this Dallas game, so you were talking about that uh, total moving against you for the uh, the Packers and the, the Vikings. This was that game for me last year where I had Dallas covering the spread and it kept on moving. I think it got to like nine points at one point before kickoff in that game and just like i was losing my mind like what am i missing here like why why is this moving against me like this is the worst feeling in the world this week this year that's cardinals chiefs but you know i'm not going to talk about that again that's just been a hideous <laughs> ride uh for me but like it just kept on moving and moving and moving and now i'm wondering if the weird vibes around tom brady the the injuries were on the offensive line i'm curious what's keeping this number buoyed at two and a half it was one and a half i think at one point yesterday uh but like i'm curious why it's just two and a half given all the odd stuff happening with the cowboys it could just be because the bucks canceled out their own weird stuff right now right yeah exactly the the offensive line i'm glad you brought up that point jim because yes you're talking about the starting center then the backup center both getting hurt um in the offseason we know how much tom brady relishes at the fact that he can you know be in the pocket and and feel safe and secure in this dallas you know defense especially on the front you know they're definitely going to try and get in there and get pressure but they are a team that likes to gamble a lot and yeah. so if, if you know tom brady is is able to kind of pick them apart and, and have his way and then it's you know kind of just the Leonard Fournette show and we're forcing Dak to throw it to you know CD and I guess Pollard because they you know they've Apparently. lost some key offensive weapons on the on that side of the ball I, Dalton Schultz no disrespect um but uh but yeah it just the, even, even all things considered like the things that are factoring in on the Dallas side for me um just far outweigh what's going on with with the Bucks in Tampa Bay and having some some semblance of what we remember um from this team if you're getting a full Tom Brady uh for right. for this game I I got to take that side yeah uh Noah Brown in your single game lineups Ryan you know there we go uh, excited <laughs> to roll out Noah Brown the wide receiver two okay. for the Dallas Cowboys in the year of right. our lower 2022 what could possibly go wrong there? Okay, so I've got to <laughs> buy bucks by 1.7. I thought I'd have value in the Cowboys. I don't. I think that for me, this is a stay away, but I think that if I were to bet, I agree. Even though my numbers say bucks by 1.7, I'd lean towards you with the bucks minus two and a half there. Let's open up the board to you, Ryan, though, because you got a lot of games on tap here for week number one. Outside of those three games, what are your favorite bets available at FanDuel Sportsbook in week number one? Yeah, so uh, there's there's two other games uh, where you, I'm I'm looking at uh, the the sides actually, um, nice. if you can believe that, Jim. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to pull up here. Not not gonna, not going to be the the homer and, and talk about what's going on here in Chicago. <laughs> but let's talk about another divisional matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers going into Cincinnati. I mean, this 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 is kind of it feels weird because it's Mitchell Trubisky and you know all all of these things that are surrounding Pittsburgh but they're getting six and a half here I they are on the road I understand that but a divisional matchup these two teams have played slug fest like pretty much since Mike Tomlin has been there um and when you're looking at Zach Taylor and his record in, in week one you know that's not anything that really jumps off of the page here um there's you know it, 
issues on Cincinnati side of the ball too, just as far as like, this is going to be the first time we see that new and improved offensive line unit together, but there's the defensive side of Pittsburgh's getting healthy and Mitchell Trubisky for, for whatever it's worth. I mean, you're, we're looking at Ben Roethlisberger for last year and I don't see really that much of a difference, especially when you're talking about if he, they do get pressure on him, he can always use his legs to run. Ben Roethlisberger didn't have that ability to do that. So I think this ends up being more close than people realize getting that six and a half number, which really hasn't changed at all since uh, this number opened. Um, but I still see a lot of money coming in on the Cincinnati side that just makes me a little bit weary that people are kind of sure about this. And that just goes to my whole thing about Pittsburgh, I think, in general, of what the sentiment is around them that they can't, you know, all of a sudden win games because an aging Ben Roethlisberger isn't there. I just, I, offensive line issues too. I, I get that. But I still think that this team will be in it to win as long as Mike Tomlin's there. And then the Houston, the Houston side of things with Indy, I'm, I'm a little, not, upset's not the good word, but I mean, we were getting this at eight and a half and this opened at eight and a half. And I immediately just jumped on this number as soon as they made it available because lovey teams and, I, you know, being in Chicago, I've seen lovey teams. I've seen what he's able to do on the defensive side of the ball. We're getting, you know, first, first time Matt Ryan with the new team, but Matt Ryan was a guy I always tended to attack when he was in Atlanta, you know, pretty much after the, the collapse in the Super Bowl to the Patriots. And, you know, I really think that Houston, if Davis Mills can just take care of the football uh, on this side of things uh, because that because of what the defense offers for Indy, I, I do think that this number is just a little bit too high. I mean, at seven and a half, I get it if you don't want to take it because it's moved a full point. But this is one that I had pretty much been monitoring all offseason. It's at home. Uh, again, we're talking about the home dogs that litter the slate. And I just feel like Houston, you know, they shocked people last year with Jacksonville, even, even for what that was worth, um, come, you know, in that first week, everybody thought that Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence would kind of shine out. Um, uh, but you know, Tyra Taylor and company were able to make it happen. So I, I like, I like what Houston's offering here at seven and a half as well. Yeah. I'm on that one too. I had that, uh, at eight and a half. Like you said, we both got that at eight and a half. Uh, I still have value though. It's at 5.55 for me, uh, okay. with the Texans being underdogs there, but that's still almost two points of value. So, I do still think at seven and a half, it's a worthwhile bet. If you didn't get an eight and a half, that's a bummer, obviously. But I do still think there's value there at seven and a half for the Texans. Feels good to be on the same page with you there. And also the Steelers, I've got that as uh, Bengals by 6.1. So less than six and a half. Um, okay. So I think that uh, showing some value there. I'm not sure if uh, we're just, you know, reading off the same stuff. I love it. That feels good <laughs> to, to be on the same sides for week number one. I'm curious if you'll agree with my favorite bet, though, for week one. Among the ones we've not discussed, talked about the Texans earlier on, talked about uh, the Giants plus six and a half when that was there. I've talked about the stupid, stupid Cardinals enough. I uh, don't need to worry about that. And then the Browns money line, which is not now moved to even money. So we won't talk about that. The one I've not discussed in the show yet where I am showing value and it hurts, Ryan, but it's the Patriots plus three and a half against the Dolphins. I have okay. this as the Dolphins by 1.13 points. And like, I get it. I get the negative sentiment around the, the Patriots and the positive stuff around the Dolphins. I have the Patriots projected to rank 16th in passing efficiency this year, which is worse than they were last year. It's a good step down based on personnel changes, based on weirdness with the offensive coaching staff um, or whatever mm -hmm. that is out there. <laughs> and I've got the Dolphins projected to rank 11th, which probably is very high. But, you know, bumping them up because of Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell uh, for a full year there. So I have the Dolphins passing offense projected to be good. The Patriots projected to be worse than them. But I can't get to three and a half. The secondary for the Dolphins is banged up. Uh, the defense for the Patriots, I think, could be pretty good this year based on some of the personnel that they've got there. So I don't recall a lot of times where my numbers have shown value in the Patriots because they are a team people tend to have a lot of faith in that pendulum has swung and that's not the case anymore. So I do like the Patriots plus three and a half when it was a two and a half, I wasn't going to bite, but this is lengthened out to three and a half. And I think that I'm going to dive in there and actually, you know, suck it up and bet this Patriots team based on this number. The humidity in, in Miami does matter and it does bother me, but it is, is it worth 2.4 points, which is the amount of value I'm showing relative to the spread right now. I don't think so. So I will go with the Patriots plus three and a half as the final addition for me here for week number one. Uh, Ryan, should I be mad at myself for putting money on a an offense coached by Matt Patricia and Joe Judge? That doesn't it, it seems nauseating, Jim, but yeah. uh, you can you can you can take that 
and then factor in that this is Bill Belichick going against the rookie head coach and you're getting yeah. three and a hook on that side of things. I'm not going to say that they're a dark horse by any means, but we, what Bill Belichick has done with the New England Patriots is, is been able to keep them afloat. Like you said, with the defensive personnel, I think that they're, you know people are sleeping on them in, the, in that regard because they've always had pretty much a, a top tier or you know, top half of the league defense um, when, it, when it comes to that. So they're not going to come out in this game and just roll over. I think that a lot of the stuff from the, from the playoff game against Buffalo last year lingers with this team, lingers with Bill Belichick, and I really think they want to come out here, make some noise. All that's been talked about was the Patriots offense looked like crap in the in the offseason mac jones can't get it done who are the receivers and it's like they've never they've never had receivers that are household names like the randy moss thing was a short-lived you know right. trial and error thing this this team has never really invested in the offensive side of the ball it's the defense that kind of keeps it going and it's still it's still Tua. i have faith in him i think that you know this will be a, a solid year for him i'm hoping that it is but when you're talking about week one to have this matchup against the New England Patriots with the rookie head coach with question marks still in the running game, like it's, it's left to be seen how this offense is really going to attack. So I think getting three and a hook is, is, is favorable. And especially with the public being on the Miami side of the ball, Jim, I like where your head's at. Yeah. I love Tua. I hope he does well. I think he's going to be, I, th I think that the, the Hades received has been a bit annoying. Uh, I hope he does well, but hopefully he holds off to week two uh, in doing that. So I can get this uh, Patriots plus three and a half. Okay. We're going to talk quickly here about our Thursday night football, just very briefly in case people listen to this on Friday, but Ryan, any thoughts for you? Bills minus two and a half against the Rams on Thursday night to open up the season. Yeah, I, I really, I, I'm starting to really like, the Buffalo side of, of things here, Jim, and the Rams have just been, been so, they're so talked up. I mean, the sharp money is coming there. That always makes me a, a little bit nauseous, but so is the public money as well too, Jim. And you're just looking, I'm, I really am curious to see how Matt Stafford looks tonight. Like, cause that's going to, that's going to determine things for me all season long with the Rams, this, this lingering injury that he has, and they've kind of been keeping it under wraps. Shout out to Sean McVay uh, for everything that he's able to do with, with that team. But we're looking at defending Super Bowl champs and being in week one, not having a lot of success, um, as well when it when it comes to you know that first game of the season now that all that being said Sean McVay is five and0 oh in in home openers so you know I, I get why people are leaning the Rams side the Buffalo Bills on the other hand they didn't have that great uh out of the division out of the conference I believe record la last year um we really like what Buffalo was able to do towards the end of the season and t taking control of their division however I I do feel like they have a lot to prove this year. They're the Super Bowl favorites um, on pretty much any sports book that you look at. Uh, we have them as the Super Bowl favorites, I believe, on FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, and I just, Josh Allen, and with everything that the, this team offers on the offense and defensive side of the ball, if Matt Stafford is really not himself, I feel like I can live with getting two and a half on the Buffalo Bills by winning this game by, by a field goal. So uh, I, I, I like getting the Bills side of things going into Thursday. Yeah, the Bills are number one on my power rankings right now. I am shocked by that. I didn't think that'd be the case, but they are. Uh, just in part because other teams have fallen uh, a bit. Uh, Tampa Bay, because of line injuries. Other teams have dipped, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, I'm not taking the two and a half, but I think they are up there for a reason. The one that I like in this game is Devin Singletary, over 16 and a half rushing plus receiving yards, because he played every snap with the first team offense, I think in week two or week three of the preseason. So they did They did take James Cook. They've got Zach Moss back once again, but it doesn't seem like they've eaten into Singletary's role, which was sick towards the end of last year. So if I'm making a bet on this game, uh, I would go with Singletary over 60 and a half rushing plus receiving yards over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all we got. For week number one, uh, again, check out Ryan on Twitter at RyanAlexander underscore W. We're going to be back once again later on today to talk some more props with JJ Zacharyson. But Ryan, it was a delight to have you on the show for today. I am excited to have you on for the rest of this year. Good luck to you in week one. I'll talk to you once again Monday to talk some Monday Night Football with the Russell Wilson revenge game. Sorry, the, my bad. The Drew Locke, even though he's not starting, <laughs> revenge game against the Broncos. Absolutely. I can't wait to get after it with you this season, Jim. Thanks for having me. I expect a Drew Lock Mizzou jersey on you oh. on Monday. Just letting Yikes. you know now. I'm looking forward to meeting you this weekend in person yes. in Chicago as well.
Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. Make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed to get all these podcasts as they're posted. We do have our college football week two betting preview with Ed Fang and Drew Martin posted already. That is up on the Covering the Spread feed. And like I said, player props with JJ Zacharyson coming up later on today. Thank you all for tuning in. Good luck with your week one bets. It is a delight to have football back in our lives. Talk to you once again soon. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.